Mr. Mark Selby, how are we, sir? Very good, Mr. Matthew Gordon. How are you? I'm glad to hear. It. Well, fantastic, fantastic. I think people are getting the the pumps are being primed, and people seem to be getting out and about and ready for a September, whatever that may bring. Goodness, <laughs> we hope. Goodness. Exactly, the junior mining market. You know, it's been a been a horrible year, but September's coming. It'll be a new yeah. dawn. The sun will rise, shinier and brighter. And uh, I'm cautiously optimistic. Um, yeah, particularly on the nickel side, but uh, yeah. We'll see what September brings. We'll see what September brings. I think many CEOs are feeling the same way. So it's good. The spring has sprung. The birds have sung. Right. Okay. Well, let's let's get into the nickel market, hot and heavy, because I know you got places to be. Um. Well, let's talk about the nickel market first. First of all, so we're, ba- we're still bouncing along bottom. It's it seems. Um. What other news? Yeah, we've been along nine bucks a pound again. I, I was expecting a sustained break. We've seen you know copper prices come off and the rest of the base metal complex you know, really move lower. And, and that $20,000 a ton, $9 a pound level, we've got a few little flits below it, but but it's hanging up. And again, LME inventories uh, remain uh, near multi-year lows. The, the big news, and, and if you felt the earth shake uh, underneath you, it was because it looks like we might be uh, at the start of the stainless steel uh, restocking cycle. Um, for those of you who've been watching this a while, we haven't talked about stainless prices going back up, you know, but in general, you know, when you see stainless prices moving higher in multiple markets, it's a good sign a, that the stainless restocking cycle is, is kicking into gear. And because stainless is still two thirds of nickel demand, you know, that's a that's a good sign that, you know, we're going to see demand, you know, and potentially prices move higher. Um, Again, the number we talked about last week with the 11% growth in stainless steel production in China, despite all the bad stuff that's happened in China, housing people getting bankrupt. Again, stainless steel is a is a very in-demand product that's going to continue to steal share from carbon steel and is going to grow much faster than the rest of the market, which every analyst does not understand. So just, just keep that in mind as we go forward. And I give people full, I told you so, rights if that doesn't turn out to be the case uh, by year end. Now, on the other side, we're going to see some more supply come into the LME. So Qingshan announced uh, uh, this week that they are commissioning one of their 50,000 ton refineries in Indonesia. And again, we're going to see 150 to 200,000 tons of nickel refining capacity come in. Again, do not panic. Um, that is basically taking supply that's in one form today and converting it into a product uh, that can be LME deliverable. And I've been talking about this great convergence in terms of LME prices coming down a little bit lower otherwise where they would have been and all the discounts for all the intermediates starting to, to compress. And, and so this is a key piece of it. And again, I think we'll see that great convergence um, continue um, over the next uh, nine months. Uh, on the news front, it's been, been, a, been a pretty quiet week. Uh, Talon put out a, a spectacular deal hole. Uh, again, they acknowledge it was infill, which is good. Um, but, you know, the fact that you can pull out 100 meters, you know, of 3% nickel equivalent, even if you're trying to, to do it in a way to, to maximize the amount of material for some test work that they're doing, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very nice hit. And, and the reason they drilled in that particular part of the ore body is it has, you know, more than a gram and a half of precious metals with it. So they want to see if they can understand why there's more precious metals enrichment, you know, in this part of the ore body uh, than some others. Right, like I say, pretty, pretty quiet week um, out there. I think a lot of people are on holiday, but I, um, I, their teams are furiously working in the background. If if our if a phone ringing off the hook is anything to go by, hey, but look, I, w- I wanted to pick you up on this um, on, on something, and I, you know, po- apologies for this, but it needs to be asked. Okay, so there was you've been putting out some some announcements and you're know, working towards the feasibility and it's you know advancing on the kind of carbon uh, capture and storage stuff, etc. Right, but there's been a market commentator take a look at your company, your project, and and has made some statements about its viability. So uh, we'll quote him, quote him, Dr. Jim Jones, out there, the doctor in the house. Um, what did you make of that? Well, have you seen it? What did you make of it? You know, what's your response? Yeah, I listened to it again. I'm 100% everyone's entitled to their opinion, but he basically materially, materially misstated a few facts. So first off, he basically looked at our May 2021 PEA and went to the cash balance at the end and said, you know, it says to do the next phase of work, they need $25 million. He then looked at our July 2023 cash balance of $14 million and said, oh, you know, they don't have enough money. They're going to need to raise money. 
kind of miss the fact that in that two year period, we've gone off and raised a hundred million dollars. You know, the bulk of the work is largely done, you know, and we're heading into publishing the feasibility in, in September. So there's absolutely no issues on, on a cash flow front, which is, which was uh, highly annoying. And then the second uh, material, material misstatement was around uh, the iron prices that, uh, you know, were used in our, in our feasibility study. So again, our deposit is a little bit unique. We produce literally falling out of the, out of the flow sheet as we process it um, through uh, magnetic separation. We produce an iron chromium concentrate. Uh, that'll be uh, about 55% iron and 3% chrome in, in, in a feasibility study and have a little bit of nickel in it. Nickel, iron, and chrome is what you use to make stainless steel. The stainless steel market in North America is a very good business. The price premiums for this product are $800 to $1,000 a ton, higher than they are in Asia. The conversion margin, so after you buy the raw materials and you convert it into product, that's a dollar, you know, basically it's sorry, $1,000 a ton. That's almost $6 a pound uh, per pound of nickel is the premium that these stainless guys are spending, you know, monies to convert it into that product. So, you know, in terms of net margins, you're looking at almost 3 to $4 a pound, which is compares very nicely to discounts in, this, in, in, in the battery market right now for, for sulfate products. We're going to ship, ship material to the stainless market. We're going to ship material to the battery market. In the PEA, we assumed everything was going to the stainless market, but obviously, uh, you know, uh, for Canada, uh, for the battery cons consumption that's coming in North America, we will be shipping a bunch of our, our, our nickel down that way. So again, I would encourage people to look at technical report assumptions. I'm gobsmacked how many people don't. Again, a technical report is only as good as the people who sign off on it, right? So we use a Senko. They not only do studies, they actually build these projects. They have a great reputation of building things uh, on time, on budget. This particular section in the feasibility study, we work with CRU, who's one of the leading market consultancies in this area. And we also work with a company called SMR, who's probably the, is the leading uh, stainless steel, alloy steel market specialist uh, in, in this area. And so, you know, we, we looked at, you know, what, what the value of that material would be, um, you know, going into that use, you know, and that was the basis for it. And stainless steel is based on not iron ore, but basically iron scrap pricing is how uh, the, the stainless steel industry looks at bringing those nickel units into, into the feed stream. So he was asserting that, oh, iron ore prices have fallen, you know, over the past year, it's a hundred dollars a ton. They used a number of 290 in, in the PEA. Well, that number uh, for the iron scrap was a 10 year average from the USGS, which is government agency that quotes these prices. Um, you know, the good news is uh, that 290 basically averaged over $400 last year, uh, average in the last reported period over $400 a ton. And then he also missed the fact that our nickel price was seven seventy five, dollars and most people are using anywhere between $9 and $10 a pound. And in terms of the chromium part of it, we used a dollar four, which was also the 10-year average. Well, uh, chromium prices in the United States on the same basis, you know, were over $3 a pound last year in, in 2022, and the latest reported number was $2.50 a pound. So, uh, you know, again, people are entitled to the opinion, but you know, just get your facts straight if you're going to take a swipe at a company because there's retail investors, you know, who've, who've you know, who've, who've invested their hard-earned dollars into a stock and, and to try and basically smear something is horrible. If somebody also wants a little extra comfort, you know, Anglo-American took 9.9% .9 of us last February. You know, they do a little bit or maybe a year's worth of due diligence before they buy a company. They didn't seem to have any issues with, with, with the way we were advancing the Crawford project. So, Okay, fair, look, okay, fair, fair, fair retort, um, and, and I hear we'll we'll go and sort of um, ch check up um, what, what you said there for sure, um, and obviously I'm sure Dr. Jim Jones, whoever he or she may be, um, in reality um, they'll probably have to go and check up the numbers too, but by the sounds of it, um, look, Mark. Um, I know you've got places to be, and, you, you, and thank you for picking up the phone to us on, on this one. Uh, maybe we can kind of catch up soon, get an update with, from you on, on uh, Canada Nickel, because um, I'm sure people will be very keen to see things, how, are, how things are advancing there. Okay, appreciate your time today. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Matt. Take care.